Okay, and the rain's here today. I don't think we're gonna be able to fly today anyways. And with that in mind, what's going on today? I guess in terms of flying, I talked about yesterday how there's gonna be that new DJI Mavic 3 Classic, and I guess it's official where DJI released this today saying, Explore Vivid. Apparently it'll be released here on November the 2nd. Not much details in terms of what they released, but for the most part you can see pictures and stuff like that in terms of what the actual drone looks like in higher quality. And at the same time, the expectation again is it's virtually the same thing as the Mavic 3 series drone, except this one won't have things like a telephoto lens, so it should be more affordable for anyone who is thinking of getting it anyways. And in terms of DJI drones still, I think it's kind of interesting to think about where in the US they're going to make things like remote ID mandatory for a lot of their drones. Although it's kind of interesting in this one where apparently I guess they had a firmware update and for its DJI Mini 3 Pro model, it says now for here, it has I guess remote ID features added to it because it says here, added support for FAA's remote ID requirements in the United States. And it seems like in this case, they're gonna make it mandatory for everybody. Well, in terms of DJI, that is kind of like their geofence, for example, because it says when the firmware update is complete, the remote ID function cannot be disabled and DJI Fly version 1.7.8 or later is required to fly the aircraft in the United States. You'll be forced to use this in general. Will that bother you overall? Or would you say that's just the way it's going to be for like a lot of the drones and all that? Because with things like their geofence, there are times where people actually don't need, let's just say, permission to fly the drone in certain places, like say indoors. So could this potentially conflict in some ways where people don't actually need this quote remote ID, but I guess the software and so forth is gonna force them to constantly broadcast themselves. I know some of the concerns are before where if anyone and everyone can track you per se, then unfortunately for some people, they may get harassed. Stories of like what, potentially crazy people going up to kids trying to take their drones and all that. Although to my understanding, this won't be like those crazy ideas where anybody with a smartphone can go out and track them and so forth. But it makes you wonder if there will be a conflict of sort where again, if someone technically doesn't need this, they're going to be forced to use it anyways with the items. And it must be a DJI news day today because I was even reading this where as you know, for a lot of places in the US for things like government work, they specifically said they wanted to ban things like Chinese made drones like DJI. And this one was just talking about how much money they're spending lobbying to try to reverse, I guess, things like those bans. This one says Chinese drone maker ramps up lobbying and fight against made in China ban. So apparently you can see the form and all that too in terms of how much they spent. It says a Chinese government linked drone maker used by the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security and US law enforcement agencies is lobbying heavily against congressional efforts to ban the use of the made in China drones. Shenzhen DJI Sciences and Technologies, which goes by DJI, filed its lobbying disclosure form last week showing how the company spent $400,000 from July through September this year. This is the second largest total DJI ever reported spending in a quarter, just behind the $420,000 spent in the final part of 2020. The specific DJI lobbying issues included opposition of the American Security Drone Act with a specific mention of the National Defense Authorization Act too. And as they mentioned here too, how just not too long ago, DJI was designated as a Chinese military company by the Pentagon earlier in October. But I guess in terms of the company's response and so forth, it says like what? DJI is not a military company in China, the United States, or anywhere else. Adam Linsberg, the director of corporate communications for DJI North America, told the Washington Examiner this month. So a lot of politics with this stuff in general. And then I saw this, how about, I guess, a quote, flying car. I don't know if this is really practical, but this was an actual maiden flight. A lot of times with this stuff, you see things like CG and all that. This one says, Xpeng Aero, an affiliate of Xpeng, unveiled the latest version of the world's first fully electric vertical takeoff and landing flying car on Xpeng 1024 Tech Day. Designed for both air flight and road driving, the flying car conveniently features a sleek rotor flow-away system for seamless conversion between driving and flying. It is equipped with a new flight control system, equipped with a fault-tolerant control functions and a dual-engine backup system to ensure safety. 
Now, I guess without a mind of safety, would you be comfortable flying something like this or even flying it around other people and all that? I mean, that's pretty humongous. I can't imagine with the current infrastructure anyways. <laughs> imagine driving a car and just saying, ah, oh, forget it, I'm gonna go fly in the air and all that. But either way, people are trying to make it happen, I guess. Okay, definitely no flying today with all the rain and stuff. Makes me wonder what I could test for the archive for today. Alright, see you guys later.